Now let's explore a little more some of the elements properties that are very used inside Power Apps. Here in this button, we already saw that we can change the text of the button by changing the text property right here in the side, or here in this drop down, we can go to the text and change here in the formula bar. The next property is the display mode. All the elements inside Power Apps have this property and there are three display modes, the Edit, Disabled and View. The Edit is the default one and I'm going also to insert a text input here so we can see these properties changing both in the button and in the text input. So I'm going to go to Insert and select in the classic elements, the text input and just place here below the button. When we insert the text element, the text input, we can see that we also have this property right here, the display mode, and it starts in the edit mode. The same for the button. Let's play the app and see that when it's in the edit mode, we can click on the button as well as we can type the text inside the text input. But now, if we change both to view mode, I can select both pressing Ctrl and click and selecting all of them and change it once if I want. In this case, I will change both to the view mode, but you could do one by one. We can see that if we play the app now, we cannot interact with these elements. We cannot click on the button as well as we cannot change the text of the text input. Now for the dis disabled mode, Let's do the same, select both here and change to disabled mode. And playing the app, we can see that they are disabled as the name says. And it's even in a gray color, so we don't even click and not even change any information on them. We may use these modes depending on, on the app behavior. If we want to disable some action for the user at the page, or the user needs to fill all the fields first before being able to submit, we can use those modes to make the app behave as we want. If we insert other elements such as drop downs, combo boxes, we will see this display mode in all of them. Okay, now let's continue with the button, but let's just change both to the edit mode. That's the one we are used and the more frequent one. Okay, now let's select the button and see what are the next properties of this component, this element. We have the visible property where we can hide and show elements. It's a toggle button right here in the sides, or if we click in the visible word, we can see here in the top that we will receive the properties that, we, that it will receive true or false. When it's true, it means it shows in the screen and when it's false, it means it's hidden. Or if we just toggle here, it will do that for us. See, once I click here, we can see that's false in the visible property. We have the positions, the X and Y positions for the elements. We can change here, for example, the X to 50 and it will go to the position 50 here in the app the Y also to 50 and it, it will go up here to the position num number 50. Uh, it starts from zero, from the left to the right and from the top to the bottom. So here it's zero and zero. And if I go to the very end of the screen, it will get the maximum values. We can change by dragging the element, the screen, and it will reflect here in the properties already. So we don't need to type, we can just drag and position where we want. We have also the properties size for the width and height. And we can also change here in the properties, here in the top, or we can just drag and resize the components in the screen. See, I just changed the width and height by dragging here in the button. And it will reflect here in the size properties. When talk about padding, that represents the spacing between each of the edges of the element. For example, for the button, let me just 
decrease a little the high so we can see better and I can change the top padding to 20 for example so it will put a padding of 20 here in the top uh, I, I needed to resize a little more so increase the high a little more so with the 20 at the top we can see that we have a space of 20 pixels right here in the top of the button if I put 50 it will increase, increase e even more okay so the padding is the spacing between the edges and the text or whatever is inside the element we are configuring here for the text for example we could add a padding to the left of 50 and the text would go 50 pixels to the right this video is sponsored by the support of my subscribers who like and comment on the videos this class is part of a full course i have on udemy where i teach beginners how to build their first apps so if you want to ensure lifetime access and see the entire course i suggest you to join me on udemy if the course isn't for you that's okay but I kindly ask you to show your support by liking this video and subscribe to this channel. Your engagement means a lot to me and motivates me to continue creating valuable content like this. Now let's get back to the class and continue learning together. Now let's take a look at the color properties. But before let me fix the top padding again and then and resize back the button to its normal size okay now we have these properties here the color one is, is the text color where we can change here right now it's white we could change to another color for example let's say red and we have the fill color so the fill color let's change for example to light blue so the first color with the letter A on it means the text color and the sec one, second one is the fill as we just saw it changes the background color. We could do this for example also for the text input and for several other elements. I just selected here, we can see that we have also the color here and change for example to orange and we have the background color here and change to gray for example. So it works for several elements of the app too. Okay, let me just change back to white because this, this didn't look very well. Okay, when talking about Power Apps colors, there one, there's one thing that annoys me a lot. That is the color of the button. When we hover it, when we click on it, we can notice that if I play the app right now and I hover my mouse over the button, it will show that blue color that was the original color of the button. Even though I changed the color and the background, if I hover, it will show that original color. And if I click, it kind of works well. But when I hover, uh, I don't like this because you see that color doesn't mean the color I want anymore. That happens because there are other configurations regarding the color of the button. If I click on the button and I scroll down here in the properties pane, I can see here in the bottom that I have some other colors configured. We have the color when the button is disabled, as I just showed before, when the button was disabled, it was gray. We have the color when the button is pressed and the color when the button is hovered. So in this case, in the hover color of the button, for the fill property, I have this fixed color here, that's that blue that the button had originally. So I have to change this formula and some others here to make the button behave with the colors we want. In this case, instead of having this fixed color that's inside a formula, we could put our color. We could delete this, for example. And then we are able to choose the color we want. For example, let's say when I hover, I want it to be uh, a little. I want it to have a blue, a light blue, but not so light as the color of the button in its 
original state. So before I selected this one, and now I'm going to select the third one. Now, if I play the app, we will see that the color will change and it's not that blue anymore. We can see that the text color also changes because it's also configured here in the color property of the hover color. Here in this letter, the A, that's the hover color of the text. There is some, some color selected that represents that white color when you just hover on the button. So you can change all the properties here. Some of them have formulas, as we just saw, that refers to other properties. For example, the press color here. If I hover the mouse over the A letter here to configure, we see this FX that means a formula, a calculated formula. So once we click here, we can see in the formula bar that's as accessing other property of the button, that's the fill. And the fill means the color of the button. So it means that once I hold, once I press the button, it will assume it will use the fill property of the button. That's this one right here. It's a little confusing when you are just starting. So there is one other way that make it, makes it easier for who is learning. That's using predefined themes. So in the next class, we are going to see how to use them in order to make it easier for us to configure our app design. See you in the next class.